Hello Summoners, welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng, and we'll be talking about our predictions for the 15 most broken champions on patch 12.20. One of the most important things in a constantly evolving game like League of Legends is to be able to adapt with the meta, and that's why we're here for you. If you want to know what's going to be OP before the patch even hits, you'll be ready to hit the ground running without even having to test if one buff or nerf really made that much of a difference. And if you don't know how to play any of these OP picks, or you're just a little bit rusty, this will give you a few days to brush up on them and some normals are on a smurf. Before we get started, I just want to say that this list is not in any particular order. This is just a list of champions that we predict will be some of the strongest, most influential picks on this patch. And one last thing before we jump into things, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's look at our predictions for what's going to be OP. We'll be starting things off with Rammus. Rammus started doing really well lately, but we noticed he suddenly dropped off hard last patch. We thought it was maybe some random fluke, so we didn't bother adjusting where he was on the tier list when we posted our mid-patch update. But it turns out it wasn't just bad luck. Riot Froxen confirmed that Rams got an unlisted change last patch involving how the game calculates his W, and in doing so, there were some unintended negative effects. He wasn't specific, but we can assume it lowered his damage output. Instead of just throwing out more damage for him though, the buffs that he's getting this time around are aimed at his ability to get onto and stick to targets. They're doing this by removing the self slow from his W and increasing the movement speed ratio on his ultimate sleep range. Overall, I think these will treat him better than restoring any lost damage that he lost out on, and expect him to be pretty OP this patch. Next up we have Ziggs. Ziggs is already in our S tier for bot and bordering on moving up to the S tier for mid. They're only giving him 10 damage to his Q, but considering how much he spammed that in lane, that can really start to add up, especially if you shift to running Scorch instead of gathering Storm. Taking an artillery rage that's already pretty good at neutralizing just about any lane and giving them a bit more poke can really push them over the edge into lane bully territory. As a result, he becomes a champion that hard stomps early, providing infinite wave clear in the mid and late game, and overall just gets good results way too consistently. Speaking of champs that are being way too consistent, Nasus once again makes this list. One of our talking points throughout the season has been how Riot deals with balancing late game scaling champs. Champs that have super strong mid to late game spikes like Nasus and Kale should always by design be high risk, high reward by being super weak early. If you can survive that horrible early game, you can carry later on. But Riot has constantly given these champions tools to allow them to be more consistent to come online, and without fail, they always become insanely dominant meta picks. I mean, this season alone, both of the champions I listed, as well as Kogma, Vayne, and Vagar, have all been by far the most broken champions in their respective roles at one point or another. The issue is, when something is both safe early and unbeatable early, there's literally no point in the game where you can counterplay them. Riot ends up gutting them later on, and then they become super unplayable until they repeat the cycle again. Maybe it might be time to try what everybody's been saying and make champs that are intended to be high risk, high reward. Heimerdinger's bust back in 12.12 made him an absolutely broken quad lane role monster, and Riot basically never gave it a second thought. This makes the 8th patch in a row since that, then he's been completely ignored. So as long as you're not a jungler, there's basically no reason that you shouldn't be able to be abusing this pick right now. He's ultra lane dominant, with the ability to flex the build to deal with tanky and squishy targets alike, and can be played to split push or teamfight depending on the comps. Shivana's changes last patch were aimed at lowering her base damages a bit while buffing her AD and AP ratios in an attempt to get her away from the tanky build and into more damaged heavy ones. But even after those adjustments, the same old tanky build is what most people go with and is pretty much just as good as before since it already had a bit of AP in it. That being said, the changes were successful in the sense that now you can opt to go for an AD Bruiser build with Trinity Force. You see this one way less often, but when it is played, it actually gets way better results. It takes a bit more work to pull this one off, since it relies more on being ahead early to be successful. So if you're a filled jungler, the tank build is probably the better option for you. Side note, Shivana Top is now doing better after the changes. Miss Fortune of course makes the list again as she continues to be by far the most dominant marksman in Plat under levels of play. Her ease of use and her strong lane bully kit, as well as an extremely powerful mid game makes her a champion that literally anybody can blind pick and carry with. Another champ that pretty much anyone can abuse right now is Sona. Last patch, we talked about how she was just about tied with Blitzcrank for being the best support in the game. But with him getting a couple of nurses patch to knock him down just a bit, it's safe to say that she's got the spot all to herself right now. Remember, this list isn't about insane 1v9 hard carry champions. If it was, no enchanter would ever be on it. Sona makes it due to how consistently she has a huge impact on mid to late game teamfights. But if you want a support that does come with a lot of carrying power, then Zara is probably the one for you. She's the best pick in this role for dominating the lane, and if it goes well, you can easily top the damage charts. 
the topic of whether Zyra and other mages are truly supports is a little bit divisive. Some people, usually ADC players, say that they're just mid lane rejects. Personally, I don't see a problem with them. They provide insane pressure in lane, and while they may not buff, heal, and shield in teamfights like an enchanter, they still relieve pressure by having CC that can peel and give foes another target to worry about. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What's your take on the mage support debate? Do you agree with my points, or do you still think the role is still for true supports? Let us know your answers in the comments down below, and let's get back to the video. Next up, we have Udyr. Back on 12.18, Riot gave Udyr the same treatment that they tried to push on Shivana the following patch, and the results were about the same. The goal was to make AP tank build less OP, but it remains a really solid option. If you're an autofill jungler, you can easily go that route and still feel pretty useful. But if you really know what you're doing, the AD build with Q Max and Trinity Force as a mythic has a really high ceiling for carrying games. We actually just released our guide for this, so feel free to go check that out if you're interested in carrying with that Spirit Walker. If you were to ask what the best champ has been overall for the entirety of Season 12, it'd be pretty hard to argue that anyone tops Mordekaiser. He has consistently been in either the OP or S tier for both solo lanes and the jungle literally almost every patch. Another champion that shows up pretty much no matter where the meta is currently is Fiddlesticks. The term ELO inflated gets thrown around a lot in League of Legends, but this is a champ where that word truly applies. Not to knock on the fiddle mains out there, but you quite literally just AFK farm, ult for kills, and then rinse and repeat. As long as you can make it to the mid game without the entire game being lost, odds are you can completely solo the game with just a couple of good ultimates. If you want another champion that's just as good for carrying those team fights, but you're a laner, not a jungler, then maybe you should consider picking up Swain. Specifically, you mid and bot laners out there. They're crazy if he isn't a part of your regular champion pool. Usually, having such insanely high team fighting capabilities should be counterbalanced by having a vulnerable early game, but Swain is surprisingly good at neutralizing most foes early on. In fact, he can almost be a bully in a lot of matchups, especially bot lanes, when paired with an aggressive support. Either way, as long as you can just make it through the laning phase and reach level 11 and 2 items, you'll be a massive force in every fight for the rest of the game. When Elo first came out, we were pretty confident that she would be a champion that would do better the higher in Elo you go, but we couldn't have been more wrong. She's actually pretty mediocre in high elo, and really starts to shine once you move down to the mid and lower ranks. In plat, she's just under a 53% win rate, while in gold, she's right below the 54%. She may have a bit of a learning curve to her, being that she's melee and all, but trust me, Nila has the tools to overcome that. She's really strong, even early on in lane, and is both a fun new way to play ADC, while also being super effective for actually carrying games. Doing all the damage in fights isn't for everyone though. Some people prefer to be enabling the rest of their team to do well, and that's where Amumu comes in. His performance varies just a bit depending on the level that you're looking at, but when it comes to the middle elos that this video is aimed at, he's absolutely an OP tier pick for both the jungle and support players. His ability to lock down a single target early game is incredibly strong for ganks or forcing 2v2 kills, and no one has quite the insta CC or AoE engage that he brings to the table for 5v5s around objectives. Finishing off our list, we have Zack. He's yet another multi-role superstar, continuing to have more than a solid showing in both solo lanes and the jungle. Zack is broken for a number of reasons. For one, his engage range is ridiculous, while his slingshot allowing you to jump in from any angle over any wall to start up a fight. Two, he's super disruptive, constantly displacing and slowing foes, so it feels like they're literally stuck in goo trying to escape. But the most broken thing is a combination of how tanky he is with how much damage he does. It's like he's too beefy to be a boy to really focus down first in fights, but at the same time, he does way too much damage to just ignore him. And that about wraps things up for our predictions for the 15 most broken champs on patch 12.20. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on any of our content like this. And remember, let us know how you feel about the mage supports down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, good luck on Summoner's Rift and may the LP God smile upon you.